Hello, people of God. This is your uh, Elder DeJambra. I am coming to you today with a word that I got from church today. I went to the body of Christ Perfecting Church where uh, Pastor Reverend James Smith is the pastor and the co-pastor or assistant pastor, uh, Reverend Anthony Council. He preached today from Revelation 3, uh, 14 through about 19. And so um, the message that we got this today was to watch your mouth, watch what you speak, watch what you say um, over your own life, because uh, what you say can affect uh, what happens in your life. He talked about how um, out of the mouth, the heart speaks and out of the um, out of the mouth comes the issues of life. And so we really have to be careful uh, about what we say and what we speak and proclaim over our life. And so he took us to Revelation uh, Revelation chapter 3 and he talked about the church in Laodicea where they were neither hot nor cold and how uh, that they make God sick I mean <laughs> and it was funny I cracked up because you know how do you make God sick you do make God sick he says that because you're neither hot nor cold I will vomit you or I will spew you out of my mouth and so anybody who's gonna vomit that means you're sick right so how you know Jesus is like you make me sick why why because he says it right there he says because you say I am rich I have prospered I have need of nothing you know because um because uh, Reverend Council, he has said today, he said that, um, you know, the place where Laodicea is, is very rich territory because it's next to the ports. And so, you know, right next to uh, Ephesus and Ephesus is good for trading and things of that nature. So this is a very prosperous or financially or materially prosperous church. And so, you know, they say, well, you know, we're, we're rich. We don't need anything. You know, if things happen here, you know, we can pretty much rebuild really quickly or whatever the case may be. We don't need anything. We got this right. So Jesus said, well, you make me sick because you don't even know. He says right here, he says, you don't even realize that you are wretched and miserable. You're blind and naked. I'm like, oh my gosh, Jesus, you didn't have to cuss us out. But, you know, it's really true because when we say, when we say, that's what it says. When we say that we don't need God or that we have need of nothing, then it contaminates our worship to God. But not realizing, this is the other thing that makes God sick. We don't even realize that we are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Like, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, how could we not get it? You know, we need God. We need the Lord. And so the uh, pastor went on to say, he says, um, therefore I'm going to counsel you. So God counsels us because he loves us. He's going to see, he says, you know, you lost your mind. First of all, because you're sitting up here saying that you don't need anything when you really didn't even realize that even though you have all of the material things, you're not hot or cold for God. You are just so mediocre and so lukewarm. And God is so disappointed with mediocre church and mediocre Christians who won't stand up for anything. And then they, I mean, like if my aunt Cheryl, she always says, she said, you know what? If you're going to go to hell, bust hell wide open. I mean, be hot or be cold. Don't straddle the fence. Don't, you know, that's the kind of thing that makes God sick. Because if you're straddling the fence, if you're not hot, then you don't know that you need salvation. And if you're not cold, then there's no way that God can possibly save you. So, you know, I, that's just me. That's how, that's what I got. And so, um, so he says first, he said, let me give you some counsel. Let me give you some counsel because I care about you. You know, people who don't care about you won't tell you anything. You know, they'll let you, you know, people that hate you, they'll let you just go run around with rips in your stockings and your hair and your wig out of place, you know? So God says, listen, you guys make me sick, but I'm going to tell you something. Let me give you some counsel because you make me sick, but I love you. So he says, he says, listen, you need to buy some refined gold. That's what you need to get. You're trying to buy things to put on your outer appearance, but your inward appearance is depleted. It's like totally wretched. It's totally undone. You need to buy something that I can fill your spirit with. So let me give you some refined gold. This is some, some experience, some truth that's been tried by fire. So he says, buy from me. Get it from me. Don't get it from all these other different places where you think you're going to get God. God says, let me give you the refined gold that is of myself. And so then he says, and then let me clothe you with a white robe. He said, let me cover you. Let me be your covering. Because see, what you've been doing is you've been trying to dress it up like nobody sees you. This is what the pastor said. I'm paraphrasing, of course because I only got a few minutes, but the, you know, you're trying to dress it up and everybody can see you. Peekaboo, we see you. We know that you're sinning. You're sitting up there in the pet, in the pulpit with this nice long robe. Matter of fact, Jesus talks about how the Pharisees, they make their tassels so long and they make their robes so long and they look so elegant and they are just totally blind and naked. 
You know, and it's, he's not talking about your physical appearance. He's talking about your spirit. How do you think that you are hiding something from God? You're not hiding anything from God. Listen, people of God, all of you who are trying to hide something and trying to dress it up up under that hat and that long skirt, you're not hiding anything from God. You need to get a white garment, a, a pure righteousness of God. God has to clothe you. You cannot clothe yourself. You cannot buy gold. You can't dress it up. You can't do anything. You need to get it from God. And so then the last part, and he says, and then anoint your eyes with salve. And so I'm thinking, you know, listen, the cares of life have punched us in the face. They really have. I mean, spiritually, we have been punched, kicked, bruised everything, you know, and, and like a boxer in the boxing ring, you know, after so many blows to the head, after so many blows to the face, you know, his eye starts to swell up, you know, and then you can't really see things clearly because you've been beat up so much by church, by religion, by the cares of life, by your job, by your mom, your dad, your family, all of the issues that you're going through that you cannot see God in a clear perspective. He said, let me give you some salve for your eyes so that your eyes can be healed so that you can see things clearly so that you can have a correct understanding and let me give you a white garment so that you can look good on the inside just as much as you do on the outside and then on top of that I'm going to give you gold that's been refined not that fake stuff not that cheap stuff we're talking about pure gold refined gold does not have that uh you know that 24 karat gold plated stuff no we're not doing that he God wants to give you something authentic so that's what I got out of the message today and then um, the pastor, he talks about, he talked about how God loved us so much that he wanted to uh, reprove and discipline the people that he loved. So that's the only reason why God has given us this wise counsel by the way of John who received a revelation from Jesus Christ on the island of Patmos to this church, Laodicea, which is not hot or cold. And so my, my petition to you today, based on the word that I got from today, and I just want to ask God to bless uh, Reverend Anthony Council for bringing that word today and bless the body of Christ perfecting church for um just, you know, having service today. So it was really good. And so he says, you know, the reason why that that God even decides to talk to us, we should be uh, appreciative of that. We we should be thankful for that. And I just want to tell you, people of God, if you are, are hot or cold, God can work better with you in your authenticity than you straddle in the fence. Don't don't worry about, you know, hey, well, you know, I'm not ready for God. God can deal with that. And if you say, hey, I'm on fire for God, God can deal with that. But if you steady straddle in the fence, you make God sick. Because he's like, you know, I mean, that's that's the same with us. I mean, we're we're made in his image, we're the same way. We make God sick. It's like, okay, why don't you make up your mind? Are you going to be in or are you going to be out? What are you going to do? Because you can't do whatever you think you're going to do. You can't do it by yourself. So I'm just, I'm really fired up about this word. And so it was really good today. Um, I just want to thank God for them. Uh, they have services. If you're here in the Rochester area, they have service um, uh, 2.30 in the afternoon. They're at Interfaith Tappanek and they're using that uh, area in the afternoon around 2.30, 34 York Street. Um, uh, Reverend James Smith is the pastor and, uh, Reverend Anthony Council is the assistant pastor. So, you know, go by there, get a word that's going to fill your, your spirit and feed your spirit as well as.